Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the emulation performance of the upcoming Jetson Nano 2GB. It's basically a cut down Jetson Nano and the price on this is really, really good. Coming in at $59. Now, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the original $99 Jetson Nano, but we still have that same Tegra X1 CPU. I have done a first look video on this board, I will leave a link for that in the description, but I know a lot of my regular viewers want to see how this thing handles emulation, so that's what this video is about. If you're interested in checking out the full spec list on this board, or just learning more about it, I will leave some links in the description. But now it's time to get right into the operating system. Okay, so before we jump right into it, just want to show you a few things here. As you can see, we are running Ubuntu 18.04, we have that Jetson Nano 2GB model, uh, LXDE desktop with the Openbox Manager and we're using 778 megabytes of RAM right now as it sits. It's using that Tegra X1 CPU. It's running at 15 watts. Um, it's usually down here somewhere. I guess it's kind of hidden right now. Power mode, max in. So we're at 15 watts. We can go to five. It's definitely gonna lower power consumption, but it'll also lower performance. So in the past, with the original Jetson Nano, I had to do a lot of stuff to get everything installed, especially PPSSPP. Now I had to compile it from source, but here, all I did was add the repository, the testing repository, it installed it, and it boots right up, but we're running an older version. Still, not going to mess with it because I have done some testing here, and it actually works really well on this unit. I also have RetroArch installed. Let's have some PS1 and some Sega Saturn here. And Dolphin. And for Dolphin, again, just like the original Nano and the Xavier NX, we have to be full screen for Vulcan. If you are not full screen and you want to use Vulcan, it will crash and sometimes it actually locks up the system. If you want to use OpenGL in window mode, it'll work just fine. And I'll just show you here. Actually, we'll go back to Vulcan. We're not full screen. And you'll see the FPS flashing up here. I'm going to ignore for this session and I might have to do a reboot here. So yeah, it's just something about the X window or something like that is a little messed up here with Vulcan. But if I just go right here, set full screen, launch that same game with the Vulcan back in it'll boot right up and it'll be fine. I have this issue with all of these NVIDIA dev boards. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some testing. First up, we're gonna start out with RetroArch. We'll go full screen with it. We'll do PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, then we'll move over to PSP, and then GameCube and Wii using the Dolphin emulator. Okay, so starting off light here, we have some PS1. I'm using RetroArch with the PCSX Rearm Core. FPS is up in the top right hand corner. I have the name of the system, name of the emulator, name of the core, and the name of the game on screen so you know what's going on at any given time. I expected PlayStation 1 to run really well, and as you can see here, we're getting great performance, so PlayStation 1 isn't going to be an issue for the Jetson Nano 2GB. So here we have some Dreamcast using RetroArch and the Flycast core. Unfortunately, ReDream will not work with this. I tried the Raspberry Pi ARM version, I just can't get it to launch. And every single game that I test right now has some kind of weird issue like you're seeing now on screen. This is Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and the only time I've ever really seen this are on older NVIDIA GPUs. And when it comes down to it, this is an older NVIDIA GPU. I mean, it's based on Maxwell architecture. Now I'm sure this will be fixed in the future. All right, so moving over to PSP, and I'm actually having really good luck with this. We're at 3x resolution with most of the stuff that I tested. Overall, performance is really good, and as you saw at the beginning of this video, I'm actually using an older version. It's actually 1.70, and as making this video, the latest version is 1.10. But it was very easy to install, and it's working absolutely amazing, either with OpenGL or Vulkan. I got a couple more PSP games to test out in this video, and with the harder to emulate stuff like Midnight Club or Chains of Olympus, I did have to take it down to 2x with the Vulcan back end, but still, it performed great. Yeah, being an Atso might be useful after all.
Another one that worked really well on this board is the Oba Sanshiro core inside of RetroArch. So here's some Sega Saturn. I tested out a couple games. I didn't run into any issues. I mean, we're at 60 FPS. Everything looks good, sounds dead on, and performance is great. And finally, at least for this video, we're moving over to the Dolphin emulator for GameCube and Wii. The lower end stuff runs great using the Vulcan backend. This is Soul Calibur 2. If you want to run some Wind Waker, some Mario Sunshine, some Smash, it runs pretty decently on this board using this Dolphin emulator. But it won't run every single game at full speed. I actually tested a few harder to run games and this thing just fell right on its face. We'll get to that in a second, just to let this play out. So at the native resolution, with the Vulcan back in, easier to run games are going to work perfectly. But you're going to run into those harder to run GameCube games and Wii games that just aren't going to work well on here. Some that come to mind are F-Zero GX for GameCube and Automoto Listo. I'm going to launch this one real quick and I'll get into a little bit of gameplay and just show you what I'm talking about. So even with the time attack, no other cars around. We're around 47 to 50 FPS. I have not seen this game jump up to 60. I mean, in the menus, it'll work at 60, but when you get in gameplay, it's just not going to be at full speed. And this is one of the harder ones to emulate for GameCube. And when it comes to Wii, performance also isn't that great. This is Sonic Boom, not the hardest one to emulate, and this does natively run at 30 FPS. We're at half speed, a little over half speed. So I've had the Jetson Nano 2GB in my possession for about a week and a half. I've tested a lot of stuff on it, and so far, it's an awesome little $60 board. It's definitely one of the best performers when it comes to emulation, and what you saw in this video were a couple standalone emulators and RetroArch. But I got a good buddy who runs a site called Tech Toy Tinker, and he's the lead developer for Retro Arena. He actually has a Retro Arena or an emulation station build for the original Jetson Nano, the 4GB model. Unfortunately, it's not working on the 2GB yet, he needs to get a hold of one and port everything over. And I've actually been using the beta version for the last few days, and it works really well on the original Nano. Like I said, it's not working on the 2GB yet, but I'm sure it's going to be ported over really soon. It supports a ton of different systems, and basically, it's RetroPie for the Jetson Nano. So if you already own an original Jetson Nano, you can download this and flash it to an SD card right now. You'll be up and running in no time. I'll leave a link to his website in the description. But I can't wait till this comes to the 2GB model, because it's a much cheaper option than the $99 version. So that's pretty much it for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I do have a couple more videos planned for the 2GB model. If there's anything you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But overall, I'm really enjoying the Jetson Nano 2GB right now, and at that $60 price tag, I think it's well worth it. If you're interested in pre-ordering it, I'll leave a link in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.